when it comes to cruising, two of the biggest players are Norwegian Cruise Line and Royal Caribbean. Between the two major lines, there are more than 40 ships sailing from dozens of ports around the world. If you are planning to set sail, the odds are high that you'll be looking at least one of these cruise lines. You might wonder exactly what the difference between the two is. The truth is there are lots of things that are very similar between Royal Caribbean and NCL. For the most part, taking a cruise on either line is gonna have a similar feel, but that's not to say they are exactly the same. That's why I'm covering some of the bigger differences between Norwegian and Royal right now. One of the big reasons that many people pick a specific cruise line is the price. While cruise lines can offer a similar experience, what you pay for can vary widely. That's one of the differences between Norwegian and Royal Caribbean. Both are generally more expensive than lines like Carnival or MSC, but I've found Norwegian Cruise Line is often, though not always, pricier than Royal Caribbean. For instance, take a July 2022 trip aboard Norwegian Sky from Miami headed to the Bahamas. The four-day cruise offers four departure dates during that month, and it starts at $608 per person for an interior room when I did my search. Royal Caribbean, they offer a similar trip. It also sails from Miami, heads to the Bahamas, but this is aboard Freedom of the Seas. Their four sailing dates during July 2022 start at $519 per person. It's about 100 bucks less. And a seven-day cruise from New York on Norwegian Joy in July 2022 started at $1,112 per person for the least expensive cabin when I looked. Royal Caribbean, they offer a similar seven-day cruise from New Jersey during the same month aboard Oasis of the Seas, but that one only starts at $9.88. Now, this isn't to say that Norwegian Cruise Line is always more expensive. However, in my experience, you'll often find the two lines are in the same ballpark when it comes to price, but with NCL being slightly higher in the cost to sail. Why should you care about the size of a cruise line's fleet? After all, you can only sail on one ship at a time. But fleet size, it gives you more options. It means more departures, more itineraries, and more choice for which ship you cruise. Bigger fleets mean more likelihood of finding a cruise that fits exactly what you want. On that front, Royal Caribbean, they have the larger lineup of ships. In total, the cruise line currently offers sailings aboard 25 different vessels and has a new ship planned each year out until at least 2026. Norwegian Cruise Line now is no slouch, but the fleet it totals 17 ships, about two thirds as many as Royal Caribbean. That said, NCL also has new ships scheduled each year until 2027. The bottom line, if you want more options, Royal Caribbean offers the larger lineup. I covered cruise fares a moment ago, but experienced cruise passengers, we know that it's not all that you'll spend on a cruise. There's also onboard spending. This category includes all the money you spend on things on the ship, including drinks, specialty restaurants, Wi-Fi, gambling, and more. In this case, average passengers on Norwegian can likely expect to spend more compared to sailing on Royal Caribbean. In 2019, Royal Caribbean Group, which is the parent of Royal Caribbean and a few other cruise lines, saw their onboard and other revenues totaling $3.1 billion, according to financial reports. Given the number of passenger days, that comes out to about $69 per person per day in onboard spending. Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings Limited, the parent of NCL, they saw onboard revenue of $1.9 billion, or about $94 per person per day, based on the number of people carried. Keep in mind, we don't have data for each cruise line specifically, only the parent companies overall. Still, quick checks, they usually show higher prices for many things on NCL. For example, the cruise line's drink package, it's priced at $99 per day, while Royal Caribbean starts around $65 to $70 per day. Looking for a more luxurious cruise, you could try sailing on smaller, more luxury-focused ships and cruise lines. However, that can be a very different experience than the fun of sailing on a larger vessel. 
For instance, if you have children, they would enjoy a big ship with things like go-karts and kids areas compared to a high-end ship that's focused solely on adults. Norwegian Cruise Line, they offer a solution. Its ships have an area called the Haven. This is a high-end resort within a resort. It features a small number of higher-end cabins along with numerous private amenities, things like pools, lounges, a bar, and restaurant. Regular passengers, they don't have access to these areas. In short, if you're wanting a more exclusive experience while still getting the advantage of a larger ship, then NCL has the solution. Tired of being nickeled and dimed on your cruise? One big difference you'll find with Norwegian and Royal Caribbean is NCL's free at sea offer. Put simply, free at sea is Norwegian's regular sale where passengers get to pick among several different perks to have for free on their trip. The options include everything from free drinks on the ship to free specialty dining to free Wi-Fi and even free airfare. Keep in mind the number of free perks usually depends on the type of room you book. To be sure, there are some terms and conditions you need to know, but overall the sale can give you up to five or six different items for free. One thing to know is that cabins with this perk are more expensive than booking without it. Still, if you don't like extra charges once on the ship, then this offer, it could be for you. You think that when you're at sea, it's a way to have lots of outside time and connect with the ocean. Truth is that most ships offer pool decks, but seemingly not much more outdoor space. NCL, Norwegian Cruise Line, however, seems to put a bigger focus on being outside during the cruise than Royal Caribbean, in my opinion. For instance, many NCL ships, they feature an outdoor promenade that sticks out from around the ship, giving you a place to take in the sun and some fresh air away from the pool deck. But where the biggest difference seems to be is with outdoor dining. It seems like a no-brainer that if you were at sea enjoying a cruise, then dining out in the fresh air will come with the territory. The truth is, the wind and sun can be a major issue. A 5 mile an hour breeze in the face of the ship can turn into 25 miles an hour when the ship is underway. That means everything on your table is going to be blown off. And if you were dining during the day, the tropical sun can make eating outside uncomfortable. In other words, a cruise line has to think a lot about how to set up outdoor dining so that it's a comfortable and relaxing experience, not a mess that just leaves you annoyed. Norwegian, they seem to focus more on outdoor dining with several spots on its ships where you can sit in the outdoors and eat without having to worry about the wind ruining your dinner or the sun beating down on you. It's not to say you can eat outside on Royal, just that there doesn't seem to be as big an emphasis. When it comes to the largest ships with the most features, there's little argument that Royal Caribbean is the gold standard in cruising. Its Oasis class ships are the largest cruise liners in the world measuring more than 1,000 feet and 225,000 tons. The ships are also well known for having unique things to do, including ice skating, the Flow Rider Standing Wave, huge multi-story slides, and tons more. If you want a ship with the most to do at sea, then Royal Caribbean is likely your choice. Now, Norwegian, they are making huge strides in this area. However, as a whole, the fleet quite isn't there yet. Its Breakaway Plus class of ships are the cruise line's largest. These ships measure about 165,000 tons. On board, you will find a number of unique things to do, including go-karts, laser tag, and even water slides that will take you out over the edge of the ship. To be fair, I think these newer ships are comparable with Royal Caribbean. It's just that on average, Royal offers larger ships with more innovative things to do. These days, every large cruise line offers a private island. Norwegian? They actually offer two, Harvest K near Belize and Great Stirrup K in the Bahamas. Royal Caribbean offers Coco K in the Bahamas. Now, I love going to these private islands. They have beautiful beaches and are custom made for cruise passengers. If you just want to hang out by the pool or work on your tan at the beach, then you can without worrying about transportation or paying fees like in other ports. So what is the difference between the two lines? 
Well, Royal Caribbean, they have transformed Coco Cay into much more than just a simple island where you sit and relax on the beach. The place now includes Thrill Water Park with more than a dozen water slides, a wave pool, 1,600 feet of zip lines, and even over the water bungalows. They also have the largest freshwater pool in the Caribbean. Similar to Royal Caribbean ships, the company has gone big with its private island. In comparison, Norwegian's islands, they're a bit more laid back. They still offer plenty to do, things like zip lining or pool or water sports, but it's not quite at the massive scale you'll find at Coco Cay. There's no doubt that right now, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line, they offer a lot of similarities and generally appeal to the same sets of passengers. But it is a question if that will be the case as much in the future. NCL already has pushed more into luxury cruising with the Haven on its ships, but future ships, they seem to be focused even more on offering this high-end experience. The cruise line's Norwegian Prima is the first of six ships in the new Prima class set to debut in 2022. These vessels look and are designed differently from the rest of the NCL fleet. With modern design, upscale dining options, infinity pools, and more, the new ships look as if Norwegian is focusing on a more luxurious experience compared to Royal Caribbean or even other ships in the NCL fleet. It is definitely a different looking direction from its rival. Thanks for watching, and I'm wondering what differences you have noticed between Royal Caribbean and NCL if you've sailed them both. Let everyone know in the comments below. As well, be sure to check out Cruisely's other videos, like, and subscribe. Until next time, happy cruising.